And I'm joined now by Isaac Hale. He's an assistant professor of politics over at Occidental College in Los Angeles. Isaac, my good friend, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me today. Well, let's jump right into it. We know that Donald Trump uh, has been arraigned on those 34 charges, something unprecedented in American history. I want to first uh, dive in uh, to your reaction about the charges, the fact that a former president uh, has been charged uh, in in court for the first time. Yeah, I mean, this is unprecedented, and it certainly violates the longstanding norm of American politics, even though there's nothing legally that says a former president can't get charged with a crime. Now, how severe these charges ultimately end up being, falsifying business records over an alleged $130,000 payment of hush money, to, hush money to Stormy Daniels, we will have to see. Uh, given that it's the state of New York, these are nonviolent offenses, um, and he's a first-time offender, uh, it's unlikely that former President Trump will face any jail time for said charges, but you're right, this is unprecedented. We know Donald Trump has announced his plans to run on the, the ticket for the 2024 uh, presidential uh, run. How does all of these charges play into his campaign uh, and the, the legalities around whether or not he can even become president again? Well, there's two great questions in there, maybe more. So let me kind of take them one at a time. In terms of his likelihood of being the Republican nominee, so far what we've seen in the polls is he's actually pulled away from his competitors since the charges dropped. Now, that's not to say that the landscape couldn't change if you know the Georgia investigation turns up something more serious or if he faces significant penalties that hurt him, uh, his perception among Republican voters. But so far, it seems like he's being potentially helped and not hurt by these criminal investigations into them. This is, I think, also underlined by the fact that his competitors, such as Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, are in a little bit of a, in a little bit of a tough spot with how to respond to these charges. You've seen that they have attempted to navigate um, both saying you should you should vote for me, not President Trump, but also these charges are unfair and this is a witch hunt. And that's kind of an odd situation to be in in terms of messaging. Now, in terms of the legality from running from for running, you know, once convicted, well, we've already had a presidential candidate uh, run from prison, not just convicted of a crime, but we've had presidential candidates run from prison. Eugene V. Debs in 1920 ran for president as a socialist. He was in prison for violating the 1917 Espionage Act for speaking out against World War I and the draft. He received over a million votes in prison. And so there's not really any legal question that uh, unless he was impeached and barred from office, that President Trump or any uh, candidate could run for office from prison. Now, maybe a deeper in the weeds question than in that, that I kind of brought up is so say a person is uh, convicted, faces uh, some sort of charges and, and they are convicted, they serve their time, they run and they become president. Can at that time, Congress then impeach the president for um, quote unquote, uh, high crimes or misdemeanors, or do those have to take place while the person is in office? Does the well, Constitution spell it out? The answer is the Constitution does not spell it out. Um, there is an active legal debate about whether you, it is legal to impeach former elected officials. Um, some scholars say yes, that impeachment is a tool that is available to use with uh, people who are out of office. Some say, like, look, impeachment is all in the present tense in the Constitution. We cannot impeach uh, people once they are out of office. And uh, impeachment is the tool that exists to bar people from running from, from elected office, again, for that matter. Um, so it's it's unclear, the answer is. The answer is it's unclear. It's unclear if you can charge someone who's out of office. It's unclear if you can impeach someone for behavior they did uh, in the distant past, once they're in office. So we could be reaching a potential uh, precipice uh, of, of further legal precedent. Obviously, this entire situation is something that um, scholars like yourself and journalists alike, uh, as well as legal analysts, have um, really d dive pretty deep into trying to understand what may or may not happen. We expect, obviously, the campaigns to begin heating up within the next several months. Uh, if not a bit sooner. How do you think that uh, the 24 
campaign uh, trail is starting to heat up so far? Well, um, if we're imagining an, a Trump versus Biden rematch, uh, currently those two candidates are at a dead heat in the head-to-head -head polls. It's hard to see um, how exactly these legal investigations into Trump will affect those dynamics. While they might be helping uh, former President Trump in the Republican primary, it's easier to imagine that he could face a penalty among non-Republican voters. Um, we have yet to see that materialize necessarily. Uh, pre former President Trump has around 39% favorability rating compared to President Biden's roughly 43% favorability rating. But it's always possible that we could see some significant changes there. I think the thing that political scientists and political observers are really waiting to see right now is what happens to the state of the economy before between now and Election Day. Most expect that if the economy remains as it is right now, um, you know, relatively strong, that they expect that President Biden will be the favorite for re-election. If the economy really tanks and we end up in a George H.W. Bush seeking re-election in 1992 style situation, that could spell trouble for the Democrats, even if someone with as much controversy and baggage as former President Trump is the Republican nominee. Certainly a very uh, tough topic. Um, lots of unknown questions there. But again, I think we all have to realize that um, we are at the uh, the point of legal precedent being set and things just haven't happened before. And so we have to watch and see how things play out. Yeah, I think that's true. Although I think it's important to recognize that in terms of there's both legal precedent and the changing of norms. Much of what is happening right now with former President Trump isn't about the law changing or where we understand, you know, the rules explicitly changing for presidents or former presidents. What we're seeing is that the norms of American politics are changing. This idea that former presidents, you know, shouldn't be touched, shouldn't be the shouldn't be the subject of criminal investigation. Well, that norm may be changing before our eyes, even if we still have yet to see former presidents being uh, charged with uh, charged with criminal counts for things they did in the office of president. Isaac Hale, Assistant Professor of Politics over at Occidental College in Los Angeles, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me.